Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at one of the biggest updates for the ROG Ally yet. And obviously we've got gyro support now, official gyro support, but that's not the only thing that they've added with this new November update. Kind of wanted to make this video to walk you through the new changes, show a few things off, and after all, the Ally is six months old now, and I think ASUS has actually done a pretty good job supporting this device since launch. So with that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump right into it. So I've had a chance to mess around with these new updates for about two weeks. I was granted beta access, but now it's officially available to the public. And in order to update, basically you're going to open up Armory Crate SE, go to Content, Update, Check for Updates, and you should see a few pop up. We've got a firmware update, an Armory Crate SE update. It might take a little while. The device will need to reboot with that firmware update, but uh, it's definitely worth it in the end. Now, we've got a lot of new stuff here. Uh, really good kind of quality of life features, some performance features, and of course, we've got official gyro support. But the first thing I wanted to show off were some new performance tweaks that ASUS has added. And in order to do this, you're going to head into Armory Crate SE, Settings, Operating Mode, and I'm actually going to plug into my game capture so we can get a better look at everything. From operating mode, we've always had the ability to kind of change our power profiles from here. Window, silent, performance, turbo, manual. None of this has really changed, but if we move down a bit to our GPU settings, you'll notice that they've added a few new options. For the longest time, we've been able to allocate memory to the iGPU directly from here. This actually happened a couple BIOS updates into the lifespan of the Ally. But down here, we've got some new options. Our AMD Advanced Graphics Options. RSR, Super Resolution anti-lag, boost, chill, and sharpening. And you might be saying, you know, we've had access to that, and it's totally true, but we've now got an optimize all button, and with this new update, we've got a new AMD driver, which gives us access to HyperRx. Basically, what this does is it uses Radeon Super Resolution, sharpening, anti-lag, boost, and chill all in conjunction, and AMD is calling it HyperRx. Now, the driver was actually released a while ago, but it wasn't officially available for the Ally until this update. Now, I'll tell you, there are some games this really helps out with. When we're using super resolution, anti-lag, sharpening up that image, but there's also some games where I've seen it hurt a little bit. Personally, not a huge fan of using this with Cyberpunk 2077, but I will give you a demo of it running with a different game. And you can enable it with most any game, but uh, AMD does have some optimized games here. They've got a list, Call of Duty Warzone 2, Destiny 2. Cyberpunk 2077's on the list, and when it comes to performance, personally, I haven't noticed great performance there, but latency is going to be much lower. So as you can see, they got a little chart here. Now, uh, a lot of games here that are kind of hyper RX tune, and more are on the way, but uh, one game that it really helps out with is Horizon Zero Dawn. And for this, I wanted to show you the results from the built-in benchmark. We're at 1080p, original settings, and I've got a hard lock on a 25-watt TDP with both of these tests. With HyperRx off, we got an average of 62 FPS. With it on, we got an average of 70. And visual quality, in my opinion, really isn't degraded that much on the smaller 7-inch display. Now, taking this over to a much larger screen, Radeon resolution scale is definitely noticeable. But on the built-in screen, I think it's perfectly fine for a lot of these games. And an 8 FPS game might not sound like a lot to some and an 8 FPS game might not sound like a lot to some people, but we're already working with such low specs on these integrated graphics, every little bit helps. So having access to HyperRx on the ROG Ally is really nice, but we've got another new feature here that they've added with this update, and that's the ability to disable or enable our CPU boost. From the same menu, we can go to Eco Assist, and right here at the bottom, we can disable or enable CPU boost. And we can also add this to our command center. So right down here at the bottom, I can turn it on or off at any time, even while I'm playing a game. Now with the Ryzen Z1 Extreme, we've got a base clock of 3.3 gigahertz and a boost up to 5.1. Obviously, going up to 5.1 will draw more power, and a lot of games that we play on here just don't need that much CPU clock. So we could disable it, saving battery life, and in some cases it can definitely increase performance. The extra wattage that was going to go to those higher clocks can now go to the GPU. And I'd love to show you how this works, especially for saving battery with games that don't require so much power. With this new update, 
We've got another new feature here. Our real-time monitor has been updated with three different presets. So the first one we have here is minimal. And if you take a look right over here, a little bit of information. We've got a row, which gives us a lot more information. We can actually put this up top, not going to get in the way when we're gaming. And of course, we've got the square, which we've had for a while now. This comes in really handy for monitoring your CPU clocks, GPU clocks, battery, wattage. I personally like to use Afterburner, got a little more information. But now I want to show you how much wattage we can actually save by disabling CPU boost in certain games. Okay, so here we have Cuphead. Doesn't take a lot to run this game. And if you take a look up at the top left hand corner, I've got Afterburner running. For the core clock, you'll notice this go over 4 gigahertz every once in a while, 3.6 to 4. Kind of does boost up pretty high right now, and we don't need that much CPU to run this game. Total battery draw with this, the way I have it set up right now, goes up to around 21 watts. I'm going to open up my command center, and we're going to disable CPU boost. So it's on right now. We can disable it from here, or you can open up Armory Great SE. If we give it a little while for everything to get situated, you'll see that those clocks will never go over 3.3 gigahertz. And after running this for a little while, our total battery draw is now around 14 watts. So it went from 18 to 21 down to 14. We can definitely save some battery life turning boost off. Now some games don't perform as well with boost off, but a lot of them, I mean, we really don't need it. It does go up to 3.3 with boost off, and it's still a pretty high clock when you consider other handhelds on the market. We've got 8 cores and 16 threads here. I would suggest experimenting with Hyper RX and Core Boost. You might see some better performance in some of your favorite games. But one of the biggest updates here is uh, native gyro support. So we can turn this on or off per game. And uh, from our game launcher in Armory Cray SE, just hover over a game, press X. It's going to bring us into our kind of setup menu here. As you can see, we can remap all the keys like we always could, but we now have a new gyro section. It's disabled by default, but we can set this up pretty easily. Now, turning it on gives us three options. We can use it as a mouse, we can use it as a left analog stick or a right analog stick, and for like first person shooters, your right analog stick is probably going to be the way to go, or mouse if you're not using a controller. For Cyberpunk 2077, I've got my gyro sensitivity set to 120. You may need to experiment with this. And we've also got a hotkey that'll enable that gyro. We can set this up to either hold the key and gyro is going to be functioning until we let go of that. Or we can set it up to press it once, gyro's on, press it again, gyro's off. For a first person shooter, I'm going to use my iron sight button, which will be my left trigger. So as soon as I hold that, my gyro will be enabled. As soon as I let it go, don't need that gyro anymore because I'm not aiming for anything. But again, you can basically set this up how you'd like. It's really going to come down to personal preference. And I will let you know, I'm not a huge fan of gyros. Um, I don't think that this is going to change my mind. If I'm using a mouse and a keyboard, I'd rather use my mouse and keyboard. If I'm using a controller, I'd just rather use my analog sticks. A lot of people have been asking for native support, and of course, we've been able to use a third-party application to get gyro working on the ROG Ally, but having this all built into Armory Crate SE is really awesome. Now, I might be all over the place here. Again, I'm not really used to using a gyro, but it works. So I've got my iron sight button held right now. I can just move the Ally around, use it for aiming. As soon as I let it go, don't have to worry about it anymore. And it's pretty accurate. Now, gyro is not going to work out for all games, but, uh, you know, for a racing game, there's another way we could actually set this up. When it comes to something like Forza Horizon 5, the way I have this set up is uh, always on. So my gyro is always going to be on and it's going to be functioning as my left analog stick. That's going to be my steering button. I've changed the sensitivity to 200 for this game. Again, always on. And instead of having this set up for yaw and roll, vertical and horizontal, we're going to set this up just like a steering wheel, so we're only going to use roll. So I'll tell you, I've actually been having a pretty fun time using this with racing games. Uh, I've been playing Forza for a very long time, since the very first one came out. I'm always trying to grab for that left analog stick, and luckily, if I need to, I can actually just move my thumb right up there and kind of take over control. But overall, I think the implementation of this gyro has been done very well, works out great for a lot of games, and if you're into this, this is a nice little treat. 
With this November update, there are a few more changes, and uh, you can find everything over on the change log. I'll leave a link in the description. Joystick response curve can now be adjusted. They've added a feedback hub to the help center. Added the option to toggle CPU boost. We took a look at that. Added keyboard shortcut customization for opening Armory Crate SE. So if you are using this in, uh, let's say, desktop mode, you can now set up a special key command on your keyboard to get right in there. We also took a look at the AMD Advanced Graphics options, and uh, of course, we've got that gyro support. So I do think that this is one of the best updates so far for the ROG Ally. And six months in, I think ASUS has done a great job with this handheld. It's definitely one of my favorites that runs Windows right now. Obviously, if we're talking about a Linux-powered handheld system, I'd definitely go with the Steam Deck. But, you know, if you don't want to mess with that, this is the one that I personally would recommend. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. If you're interested in learning a little more about the ROG Ally or maybe picking one up, I'll leave some links in the description. And like always, thanks for watching.